Jane Paternoster now works as a voluntary cleaner in the church. Well, I left school early after winning a scholarship. And in the meantime, my father died and I couldn't use the scholarship. So I had to go into service then. Well, mother really couldn't afford to buy me the print dresses and aprons that we had to have in those days. So I went to work at the farm, not far from home, as a general help. And I didn't get any money. Mother was paid at the end of the year when I left and she bought that for uniform, print dresses and aprons. And I went to a job in Halesworth. And I was between maid there. That's waiting on all the other maids, really. And I was getting one pound, three and fourpence a month. And um, I had two print dresses to buy when I wanted them black dress in the afternoon, caps, aprons, black stockings and house shoes. And there wasn't a lot left. We had to buy them all out of the one pound, three and fourpence. We used to be happy. We had to accept those things. There was nothing else to do. Well, now, with all the other things there are, I don't think they're any happier than we were. Not all the domestics in Peasen Hall were so content. On the night of Saturday, May the 31st, 1902, an event occurred which swept Pizen Hall into the national headlines. There was a terrible storm that night. Some say the storm recurs the same night every seventh year. During that night, someone kept an appointment with Rose Harsent, a maid at Providence House. It was to be her last appointment. Next morning, her father found her lying at the back door. Her throat was cut. Post-mortem revealed that she was also eight months pregnant. An arrest followed swiftly. William Gardner, foreman at the drill works, a married man whose relations with Rose had been investigated by his chapel elders the previous year. I was five years old at the time. And knowing there was a rumpus about something, I asked questions. Well, we knew there was a hubbub about something. And of course, we were all of them. And mother said someone had uh, stolen something out of the pantry. <laughs> and they'd put him to bed for being a bad boy. Two trials followed, and in both, the juries disagreed. The prosecution withdrew the charge, but the village passed its own verdict, and Gardner disappeared. Today, almost 70 years later, the mystery is still the subject of speculation. If this candlestick could speak, the mystery would be solved. Why? I would think. Why? Why? Because that was in the kitchen, at the foot of the stairs, I think, where the murder took place. Rose Harsens is the only recorded murder in Peasen Hall's history, but sudden death has not, it seems, been uncommon. Would have been several Susan Well, that was suicide, yes, there's no end of suicide, Peasen Hall and Sibden. There was one man up there, cut his throat, and, uh, and at the Peasen Hall Brickers up there, one of the parsons, I think he cut it, either hung himself or cut his throat. There was another ma there was another girl what lived pretty near me, down the village. Nellie Dickerson, her name was. She drowned herself. Another man I never knew him. He a, a valley from Scrubner's, I think he was. He drowned himself up there. He's not a notorious place, I can tell. <laughs> Will you know what a village is? If a, if a tile start, well, again, as it go along. That's what it is. But of course, I didn't know them other ones. Well, I knew Nellie Dickerson. And I, I, well, I didn't really know the man what was up there. Yeah, Mr. Mills, do you and think... And then there was another man hung himself in the, down at the valley farm. 
Another one hung itself down in a little wood down there? I tell you, the Cool little... spring. <laughs> this is a bad place, for you know. <laughs> think it is. A bad place. For most people, today, death's a taboo, a problem for hospitals and old people's homes. The older people in Peasen Hall can still talk about it openly. But the younger people find it difficult to understand why Clarissa Mann followed her mother as a layer out. They think I'm hard-hearted. 